So I want to give you a plan. I'm going to give you five things to do. You don't have to do all of them. If you do all of them, that'll be great. These are things that either I have done or I've seen my clients do to nurture the relationship and maintain the connection, to deepen the connection. Number one, I want you to send out a monthly newsletter, a video newsletter, to all of those pre-approved borrowers. This is something that Michael Regan, a friend of mine from Northern California, does every week. I'm not asking you to do it every week. I want to start off slow and make it easy on you. He simply takes the weekly market wrap from MBS Highway, he prints it, and he highlights the key things that took place in the market that week. And then he puts himself on Zoom, and he records a two to three minute video with a summary of what was going on in the market. And he sends it out to everybody that is a pre-approved borrower. Now, I know what you're gonna say, I'm not good on video, that's not my thing. You know, listen, he wasn't good on video when he first started either. A year and three months ago at my Leadership 360 Masters Retreat in Austin, Texas, I asked Barry to come and be with my, with my group. And I asked him to come to work with the loan originators that are in the L360 family on their public speaking abilities. And we did a workshop for about half a day where we helped people public speaking. And I lobbed a softball question to Barry that I already knew the answer to, but I wanted everybody else in the room to hear it. I said, Barry, how frequently do you practice your presentations before you speak? And he looked at me with this like shocked look on his face. He's like, a lot. I'm like, I know you do. How many times? He told me dozens and dozens of times. A lot of people think that Barry like got dropped out of the womb onto a stage and he stood up and was a public speaker. It doesn't work like that. Okay, it doesn't work like that. He is a master of his craft. He takes it seriously and he practices. And the more you practice, the better you're gonna get. I practiced this presentation more than 25 times. It's a 90 minute presentation. You only get good at the things that you do over time. Michael Regan is great at it now because he has a lot of at-bats. You just need to put your feet into the shallow end and start to swim. You'll figure it out. Number two, if you don't have your pre-approved borrowers in an app on your phone that is your CRM, I want you to get their contact information into your phone. You've got to get your contact inf their contact information into your phone. It could be in the notes section in the phone. It could be in a, a group that you create in your, in your Rolodex, in your, in your address book in the phone. I don't care. I want their name. I want their spouse's name. I want their kids' names and ages. I want their phone number. And I want any personal information that you know on these people, who their favorite sports teams are, what they like to do as a hobby, where they went to college, etc. You need to be gathering this information as you get to know them. This is where the connection occurs. And then I simply want you to put it on a rotating schedule, voice texting them once every four months. Now, what does that voice text sound like? It's real simple. Use Jeff as an example, if I may. You simply take out your phone as you're driving to work, and you hit record, and you say, hey, Jeff, it's Tim Brahim. I just wanted to reach out to you and say hi. You popped into my mind as I was driving to work this morning. I hope that you and Mary are doing well. I, I know that the kids are out for summer vacation. I hope you guys have some fun, fun vacations planned. Anyways, I was thinking about you and just wanted to see how you're doing. I hope all is well. That's it. No business. The minute that you make it a sales call, their guard go up, goes up. That's coercion, control, and manipulation. That's an attachment to something. You're making this too hard. This is about connection. The loan officer with the most friends wins. We only get what we want when we help others get what they want. People want to be cared for. That's your job, is to build friendships. Next, I want you on that same rotating schedule in the off months to send them a text. You can pre-write these texts when you get home from the event. Something as simple as, hey Jeff, Tim Brahim, wanted to say hi. You don't even need to use your name, really, because they know from the text that you're sending to them, by the way. Hey, Jeff, it's Tim. Just wanted to say hi. Now that summer's over with, I, I spotted some cool things that you guys did this summer with the family. I hope you guys had a great time. Hey, by the way, I saw that USC is ranked number one in the college football pool. Congratulations. I know you're a big USC fan. I hope they do well. By the way, if there's anything that you need from me, always know that I'm here for you as a resource. I happen to be you know, connected with some really terrific people and financial services, accountants, financial planners, insurance agents, always know that you can use me as a conduit. Let me know if there's anything I do for you. Eight times a year, three, uh, three voice texts, excuse me, six times a year, three voice texts, three written texts. 
we're nurturing the connection. We're going to make it difficult for them when it's time to buy to go with somebody else because you've stayed in touch with them because they like you, they respect you, and they trust you. And guess what? When you do these things, you like you, you respect you, and you trust you. And that's why it goes the other way. Next, stole this from Ryan Grant. Ryan looked up like you're shocked. I've stolen a lot of things from you, man. <laughs> Ryan Grant's in Costa Rica with me seven years ago at my Leadership 360 event. And he shared this strategy of something that he was doing that I thought was extremely brilliant. Now, I'm old, so when I was an originator, we didn't have social media. But what Ryan Grant was doing, I thought was really smart. At point of sale, he would say to the client, hey, I'm going to friend you on Facebook or on Instagram, and just so we're connected. And then once a week, he would sit down, and he would over a cup of coffee or his smoothie or his mushroom drink or whatever the hell he drinks in the morning, he would, he would look through his feed and he would like and comment on their posts. Oh, your family's beautiful. It looks like you guys had a great time in Cabo San Lucas. My wife, Brianne, and I and my daughters are going to go there next week. I hope you had a great time. Now, what happens when this happens? People want to reciprocate. So they start looking at your feed. And if you're smart, your feed doesn't have anything to do about business. People don't care about mortgage interest rates. They care about things that mean something to them. So your social media pages should have pictures of you and your family and your hobbies and you engaged in the things that you love to do because before you know it, you're gonna transcend the relationship from a business relationship to a friendship. The goal is for them to think of you as their friend who happens to be a loan originator, not a loan originator. There's dozens of them out there. We're creating connection and separation. And the final strategy is from another brilliant guy. I can't see him right now. His name is Jay Dacey. I don't know how long Jay's been doing this for, something like 15 years. But Jay sends out a monthly newsletter, blog, call it what you will. It's a one-page document, Word document, that he writes himself. He simply dedicates himself once a month to writing this one-page newsletter. What's the newsletter about? It's about him. It's about his family. It's about the fact that his son just won a soccer tournament in Chicago that he and his wife Kristen went to. He's like 10 years old, he's holding the trophy. How proud he was of him. It's about the fact that he's a Minnesota Timberwolves fan and he's been going to a lot of the games during the playoffs. It's about the fact that he and Kristen were in Italy last summer on a couples retreat. He puts very little information in there about mortgages. Maybe he slips a little bit in there. Or about a restaurant that is new in town that he just ate dinner at and the dish that he had that was fantastic. Now, why does he do this? Because he understands that people do business with friends. And a part of the process is being able to lower your guard enough to be vulnerable, as Dan was talking about, so they can connect with you, so they can like you, respect you, and trust you. 